Okay, so uh, with all without further ado, welcome Jody Lynn Nye. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Hi, y'all. Glad you could make it. And I'm looking forward to answering your questions and talking about what's going on with the contest and uh, some cool things happening. Yeah, so part of what we're talking about is how to make your New Year's resolution come true to be able to get that story written. So maybe we can just start off before we get to questions, Jody, with just some of your an overview as an as an author. Mm -hmm. um, how you know some some basic tips that can get people to to persevere and, and push from getting that story written, and then we'll get to the individual questions they ask. Well, remember that inspiration is fleeting. So once you get an idea, once you get the inspiration, take the time to write down everything you can possibly think about. Uh, the idea that you had, get it down now because little details get away from you. And always remember that you don't have a lot of space to get the story moving. A, a short story is a small piece of real estate. So think of an exciting way to open the story. It doesn't have to open with a bang or a fight scene, but introduce me to your characters, uh, explain what your what what the cost is, what what the what is at stake in your story. Make the reader too compelled by reading that to do anything except continue to read it. You know, what excites you about that story? Because I, I guarantee that if you're excited about it, we'll feel that. And if you're bored with your idea, we'll feel that too. So give us what excites you. Good. So um, anybody who has questions here, feel free to add this stuff. We got one here from Candace Lyle. Should I describe my main character's clothing and physical attributes? Well, at the beginning of the story, just give us enough to go on. We, I have had people write stories for me, and then I find out on page five or page eight that they're not actually human. <laughs> so <laughs> we need the basics. And then give us something to make us create a mental picture. Some authors are incredibly good at giving you just a few de details and letting you fill in the rest. And I, I want a good picture. I want to know who I'm dealing with. I want to know where they are, who they are, where they come from, but don't, don't jam us with uh, what CJ Cherry called cold indigestible lumps of exposition. You know, work it into the story. Good. All right. And then we have um, Michelle D asked, what do you look for in winning stories? <laughs> oh, that, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing and not everybody, remember how subjective it is because it's literature and everyone comes from a different place writing and everyone comes from a different place reading. I'm looking for something that has that spark, that spark of imagination. Everybody has read a vampire story, but what is it about a vampire that you can bring to the story that makes it different, that makes it interesting and fun and, and good? Not necessarily fun in the, uh, okay, I'm going to meet a vampire and he's going to disappear and teach me how to turn into a hundred rats or something. But what is it that, that you can make different about it? I had a, a story in the very first quarter I was judging that was a where was a where creature story I had never come across before, and it was written from the point of view of a woman who was a were skunk, and it was a wonderful, wonderful story because she was an aristocrat instead of being a scruffy person who turned at the full moon and and tore their clothes and ran rampant. Oh no, no, she she was living living large, and it was a beautiful story. So if you have an idea, show me why yours is different. Give me that unique thing that you can do so well and commit to it. Don't forget to end the story finishing off the plot that you began at the beginning of it. So often I have had to dismiss stories that had wonderful beginnings and no ending or stories that took so long to take off that you had very little word count left to, to resolve the story. So balance is is a very important thing too. make every sentence count okay and then we've got uh bob delaware asks what keeps you reading a story until the end well 
it's it's when a story is compelling, when what is at stake is so dire to me that I can understand the character's point of view. And even if it's not something that I myself would pursue, I can understand why it's important to the main character. What is what is the thing that got this character out of their personal comfort zone and made them go along on this adventure or undertake this quest or, or task? Mm -hmm. What made them move from point A to point B? Every story starts when something changes. So what is so interesting about that? And you keep adding to the tension of that moment. What gets in the way of that person achieving that goal? And keep it interesting. Don't get bogged down. Don't go off on tangents. It's a short story, not a novel. So you don't have time for subplots. You don't have time for uh, a, a be real. You need to keep your mind on that story arc and bring it to fruition. And the ones that go on to become finalists are the ones that I sat down with satisfaction and say, yes, that person nailed it. Good, good, thank you. So Rob Johnson asks, what are the stages of judging? How does the story progress through honorable mention, silver honorable mention, semi-finalist, finalist, winner? Okay, they come into the contest and they are put into the hands of my slusher, uh, Carrie English, who is a previous winner. And she is a terrific, terrific screener of things. She goes through and takes out the stories. Well, actually, most of the things she takes out first are ones that are not actually stories. We get a lot of college essays. We get some poetry. Uh, we get things which are not in English. And very recently, we received one that was a poem in Spanish. So it was doub doubly disqualified. And we don't take uh, we don't take really violent stories or stories with overt sexual content or drug use. We don't take anything written for children. Our our market is from young adult upward. So keep that in mind when you're writing a story. Would you show it to a 12 year old? Would you show it to a 15 year old? If you wouldn't, then it probably isn't for us. Once it comes to me, once Carrie has, has screened the stories, I receive a, a large quantity of them, you know, four or five, 600, maybe more a quarter. It all depends on the quality. It, it varies so much, you know, everything depends on the quality of it, what Carrie sees in it. If she sees any, any particular uh, brilliance, then she she will mention that to me. There's a comment section that, that I get to see. And as I go through them, stories that are complete but may not have that spark that I'm looking for probably will receive an honorable mention. But I, I, want, to, I want to also say that if you keep getting an honorable mention for the same story that I keep seeing over and over again, and by the way, I do keep track why don't you write me something else? I'm sure that you have something in your imagination that, that might go farther. You've learned more about writing by rewriting this story. If you keep getting it back from this with the same grade, write me something else, send me something else. I wanna see it. The ones that rise above that are silver mention, the silver honorable mentions. And what's great about those is they are, in many cases, almost as good as a finalist. In fact, a lot of them that uh, I put into the finalist uh, area to look over later on end up being silver because maybe they weren't quite as uh, perfect as the finalists are. But the nice thing about silvers is that you can resubmit them to us. The next, uh, next category absolutely is uh, semifinalist. And while uh, silvers can be resubmitted, semifinalists cannot. And what's interesting about semifinalists is that they may be different from things that we would normally publish. They may be almost good enough, and they'll have you know maybe just a little something that isn't that isn't quite right. But some of them may also be outside of our normal market. But they're so good that I want to give them an award. And 
I'll, I'll tell you that. I will tell you exactly why I can't accept it. But I, I had one uh, last quarter that was brilliant. It was wonderful. I wish I could have given it a finalist uh, marking, but it had no science fiction or fantasy element at all. It was just so well written. So keep in mind that it will not go to finalist if you don't have a science fiction or fantasy element. I have to have that. It's We're a speculative fiction contest. So keep that in mind. Semi-finalists receive a letter from me with, with a few notes, uh, some, some tips. And then there the, the finalists are the ones that are sent to the other judges for their input. And once a quarter out of those eight stories, they pick three that are the winners for that quarter. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. I think you did a pretty darn good job there. <clears throat> so um, again, anybody that's come in since we started here, if you have questions, just post it to the chat and then I'll be forwarding them to uh, to Jody. So here's the next one from um, Aiden L. Speaking of no ending, what makes a good ending according to you? Well, it has to satisfy the purpose of the story that you set out at the beginning. If this person is going to go and repair a weather satellite that is circling the earth and, and sending down lightning bolts instead of uh, just doing what it's told, I expect you to fix that, that satellite or find a, a reason why it couldn't be fixed or a reason why it shouldn't be fixed. I need an ending that completes your story arc. So it needs to satisfy that itch, whether or not it's a success. You know, a, a story ends with either a success or a failure. Either is possible, but it needs to satisfy the reader. We are at base entertainers. So I want you to make me glad I went all the way through your story. <laughs> Good. Now, one thing, too, that I'm going to interject here as well, for an example of what you can consider a good ending or a good story or a good transition mm -hmm. is in writers of the future. You know, these are the stories that made the grade and they they succeeded in, in accomplishing what Jody's talking about here. So if you don't read writers of the future, you're doing yourself an amazing disservice. One, just these are people that went from being amateur to being professional. And this is the work that proves it. So that's how good you have to be to consider yourself professional. But then a lot of what she's saying and what's been being said previously with Dave and with all the way back to Algis, what you see in these books are what are considered, you know, professional standing. And it's also, this is the market you're writing to is writers the future. So this is what is being bought and being published. So also that's important because maybe you're writing to a different market and you're wondering why you're not making it. Well, take a look at this market and the way you can tell is by reading the books. I had a conversation this evening with a writer who has been submitting to the contest and finally figured out that this person's work was not aimed at us and still wants to succeed, still wants to get that finalist and winner uh, position, but the stories that have been submitted so far don't fit. Yeah. That, that writer now knows that. That's good. And that's important. Hope that people are listening to see you get it as well as share it with your friends too. Right. You are and writing to a market here. Yeah, exactly. So um, here we go. The next one. This is uh, VR. What are examples of stories you consider masterpieces? And yeah, so up to you then. There's totally, I'm totally willing to have you list out stories publishing writers of the future as well. <laughs> <laughs> any one of these anthologies, any one of these anthologies will give you a pretty good idea of what an excellent story is. The, the first one that I voted for, which is it in this one? I have I have one here. Uh, I wrote a story for this myself, but I also judged. And yes, it is in here. It was an extraordinary uh story that was written by a young lady from the Philippines, Vita Cruz, and it's called oh, Odd and Ugly, and it's in second person. And that is really, really hard to get right. She, she wrote it as if it were a Filipino folk tale, and it was brilliantly done. And it wasn't like anything that I had ever read before. So I, I really loved it. I thought it was a terrific story. The, the, all of the stories in this, this book, and are, are things that I would be happy to read again. 
if you want to see what what quality looks like, some people who who really nailed it, you can find it in here. I I just noticed. I, I realized I knew it at the time, but I, I had forgotten that a young lady in this book, in volume 34, had been a student of my friend Richard Chwedek, who is a Nebula award-winning writer. Uh, he teaches at Columbia College Chicago, which is an arts college. And I have I have seen her come along from somebody who was writing fan fiction level up to professional grade and you know, tried tried her tried her skills at the Writers of the Future, and she is one of the winners in this book. So I'm very proud of her for that. Great, thank you. And this is from PA PA Sicar. So uh, the same story, the same kind. You mean, or really the same story on resubmitting? Uh, honorable mentions and silvers can be resubmitted. Uh, Semi-finalists and finalists cannot. They are considered to have uh, been boosted to professional grade. Um, the the semifinalists because they don't belong to us; they're not for our contest. And the finalists because we have already chosen them as top. So yeah, if you ha have received a, an honorable mention and you would like to go farther with it, look it over and tell yourself why. Why do you think I I didn't give it a higher grade? And with the silver, it might indeed have been finalist quality, but there are lots of reasons why it may not have made it all the way, such as we might have had two werewolf stories the same quarter that were just, you know, one was just like yours. Or I may already have chosen a werewolf story in a previous quarter. I have the, the arduous task of picking out subgenres for the book that are not alike. So I'm trying not to have two massive space epics in the same book, uh, two funny vampire stories, uh, two stories about trolls and so on. So you may just have fallen into that trap of you were the second one and you weren't quite as perfect as the first one. So I suppose you could inquire, but um, maybe just send me something else or rewrite it and, and send it in and hope that in the next year, you know, your vampire story, your werewolf story, your space opera story will will uh, be a finalist. Good. So so then so PA, so that was a, so hope that answers your question that you need to tweak it so that you can it's not the exact same story because you got to tweak it. Don't just resubmit it and hoping that it wasn't just a bad hair day that they rejected you on. It's, Believe me, I have seen stories that have been resubmitted exactly the way they were before. I I I remember the ones that I have seen. It's it's, you know, within within a, a few paragraphs, a, a couple of pages. I know I've read it before. Yeah, good. All right. So this is from uh, Gentina Gray. Copywriting your own work. How important is it to file your copyright on the government site if you publish it? online with veritable time with verifiable time and date of publication is that enough you don't need to do that the current copyright law is once you have committed it to a medium it's copyrighted to you you can get a formal copyright uh it will cost you 30 dollars or 35 dollars you don't need to do that it is already yours if somebody prints it if somebody steals it you have an action you can probably pr produce your computer files with the, the date stamp on it, but you don't need to do that. If you are so worried that somebody is going to steal your idea, then publish for yourself. Um, you're going to have several people's eyes on the story over the course of the time that it is with us. But, you know, trust us. We, we don't need your ideas. We have our own. Everybody who is a judge in the contest is a pro with many, many publications to their name. And they're, they're, they don't have time to steal ideas. They're not interested in it. We have too many of our own. If I live a thousand years, I'll never get through all the things that I want to write. Good, all right. And then uh, Michelle uh, Diaz again, can a semifinalist enter a different story to a different quarter? Absolutely. Absolutely. Only that story is is uh, no longer able to be submitted. You, on the other hand, can keep submitting until you win. Right. 
Or pro out. Or pro out, yes. Once you have a professional contract for a book or you published your third professional short story, you are no longer eligible for the contest. Yes. So um, another one now from PA. Uh, how many uh, stories does uh, Carrie English pass over to you? Well, let's, what we do is we keep it. You already said that you get, but we, we're trying to encourage writers. So we get a lot of entries from a lot of places. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're safe to say we're the biggest uh, short story competition within science fiction fantasy that exists. And um, proud of it. And it's people like UPA that helps us along as well, because you're very, very vocal and, and very supportive. And we've seen you also on a lot of the events with uh, Scott Card. So um, anyway, so that's as much as I'm going to answer that question. First one. And um, he's got another question here. How many submissions do you read from beginning to end? How many do you drop from the start or in the middle? When you drop a story, where's the story? Do you tend to drop it? So I guess we'll keep that as a as a general type thing, what you're looking for and what how that works for you. I know pretty quickly whether or not something is is worth my continuing to read. Remember, even if it's a wonderful story, if you do not have an interesting beginning, I probably will never find the interesting bits. You have to keep in mind that you are in fact writing to a market. You're writing to me. You're writing to my fellow uh, judges. And if you make us fight for it, if you make us fight to get into your story, then we're probably going to never see how wonderful the rest of it is. Write your beginning so that we are too intrigued not to keep going. So bearing in mind that you are only one of thousands of entries, you probably want to look it over and say, what is it that's so compelling about this that somebody just can't stop reading it? If you haven't got a narrative hook, if you don't give us a compelling reason to go on past the hook. If you drop the energy, that's probably where I'm going to stop because I have many, many other stories waiting for me. If you've never heard of John W. Campbell, he was an editor that uh, was analog. Was it or Amazing Stories, John? That, no, he was Astounding, Astounding Science Fiction. Um, okay, I knew it started with A, all of yeah. this. <laughs> Asimov's Astounding, Amazing. He had uh, a practice of going down a story that he had submitted to him, and it was known as the red line of death. When he stopped reading a story, he would put a line right across the page, and that would be devastating if it was close to the ending, but it's, it's really hard if it's close to the beginning because it means that he didn't even get into what you probably thought of as the meat of your story. So keep in mind, it's it's a it's a living thing. A, a short story has to have a life of its own. It has to be interesting and compelling and and vivid. If it's in here and it's not on the page, it doesn't help you. Good. All right. So are there this is from Aiden L. Are there thematic commonalities among the winners? I don't think so. I, th I definitely I think haven't observed that. I've not observed it at all. There's so no, many different I, science fiction fantasy has just everything from even from before with Dave and, and Algis and Katie. Mm -hmm. There are so many different ideas and themes and I am I am fairly easy to please if it is a good story. It doesn't matter what genre it is. I don't like things that are too icky horror, but that's not for our, the contest anyhow. Uh, and again, if you are writing horror, you have to give me a reason for wanting to go on with it. So is it psychological horror? Is it is it just plain squick? I don't need that. But psychological, uh, the the darkness that is in the minds of people. Uh, I, there, there are so many reasons to write a good horror story. So we really go for, I'd say, dark fantasy rather than, than horror. So keep that in mind. Science fiction and fantasy, practically every incarnation of that. Good. All right, so uh, this is from Sid Clemens. Do you give feedback to those stories that are well-written but lack enough science fiction to qualify as a finalist? Yes and no. If it's so good that it lands in the semifinalist category, you'll get a short letter from me. Otherwise, 
if I think it's so good that it could be improved, it may get a silver, but probably no. If it doesn't have a science fiction element that I can perceive, it's it's going to come back to you. Good. This is from um, Robbie in Tokyo, Riley. Is it common for writers to get halfway through their story only to find out it's been done and done well? Oh, absolutely. I have. I can't tell you the number of stories that I have written or wanted to write when I realized that I am rewriting Larry Niven or Anne McCaffrey or Andre Norton or someone who is a great writer. And I was inspired by something that obviously was similar to what they were inspired by. So you could write it for your own pleasure. Every single word that you put down is practice and practice is good. Good. So Gentina Gray, thank you for that. A group I'm in has been freaking out about copyright issues. So thank you so much for confirming that just having a date of publication is enough. So that's great. And just mm -hmm. to the point too, um, when you get published in Writers of the Future, you maintain your rights. Um, you, you definitely can then, we ask that we're able to publish it first you know, as a winner, uh, but otherwise, many of many winners get their stories published in other publications. Um, you have rights, and the artists have rights to their art as well. So that's that's definitely not a, a problem that uh, you're going to keep your rights to your stories. And if it was published in the future, it's very easy to sell it in other markets too. And one of the cool things about it is, of course, the fact that you get your story illustrated, which is very rare, even for. Uh, noted professionals, because generally there's only one illustration. There's only one cover. I don't know which way. I'm, there we go. Uh, there's only one cover on a magazine, and most of the stories will not even get an illustration with it. But as a winner, your story will be illustrated. All 12 of the stories by winners in every volume are illustrated. And that is a huge privilege. They, the Winners get to see the story, the pictures for the first time at the gala event. And I love watching the looks on their faces as they recognize the piece that belongs to them. And they always know, and they know just in a split second. It's one of the coolest things that happens. And very emotional. Very. And just as a point too, the cover reveal for Rise of the Future Volume 39 will be... Um, a live Zoom event on March 1st. I'll be sending around the notice on that relatively soon. But March 1st, um, uh, Tom Wood did the painting. I'm not going to say it was, but it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. And Kevin Anderson wrote the story uh, to the cover. So anyway, more on that uh, later, but I just want to let you know about that as well. Okay, so this 40, is... 40, don't you? What's that? 40 or 39? 39. We're, we're judging volume 40 right now, but book 39 releases oh, okay. in April. Yeah. Okay, so this is also from VR. Just one more uh, about resubmitting our slight tweaks. Okay, is it okay to change just ending or just add, remove some stuff? Or does it need to be written top to bottom? Do what needs to be done for the story. I hope by having written the story and then by going over it with fresh eyes, and I find that by putting something away for a while, I come to it as a stranger, as, as someone. Once you've forgotten enough about how you wrote it, you'll be able to read it as an editor and say, oh, did I really do that? You want to be able to look at the story and say what is missing or what is different. You can change the ending. You can just tweak it slightly. You can write, rewrite it from top to bottom if that's what it needs. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to take the thing and, and you know wring it out like a rag. Um, I'm, I'm asking you to make that story better if you can. Not yeah. every story can be improved. Good. Thank you. Bob Delaware asks, you mentioned honorable mention is missing that spark. Any amplification on this? I've received three honorable mentions for three different stories. How to take it to the next level? If you're, again, this is fairly subjective. If if the style is a little flat or if it's something that we've we've seen all too often, what is it that you made you want to write this story? What made you want to pick up at this particular kind? Are you, are you telling us the story of of your dungeon campaign? You know, are are you are you introducing us to people that you actually know? Are you sort of rewriting Dracula or Cthulhu? Because you don't have the the spark of invention if you're copying something that you have actually played or read somewhere else. I want to know 
I want to see that inventor's spark, that, that inspiration that made you want to pick this up. So if, if, you're, if you're continually getting honorable mentions, maybe, maybe you need to kick up your writer skills a little bit. Do you not have enough description or do you put it in the wrong place? Do you make the, the reader carry too many questions in their mind from the beginning? If, if you don't reveal the things that are not actually the mystery of the story, you're making your reader carry a, a burden that they add to again and again and again of questions that you should have answered as soon as possible. Like he was being followed, he turned, he saw her. They had known each other before. We still don't know who she is. So that's a, not a necessary mystery. What may be the mystery is you know, how they know each other or um, what connection she has to solving his, his problem. Where, where do you think that the problem arises? And, and only you can answer that question. You have to reread your work and say, where, where am I not keeping the reader's interest? Good. Thank you. And one thing I, I'm going to interject there too is we have this free online writing workshop, which um, will give a lot of of details onto every part of a of a short story, the beginning, the middle, the end, how to introduce characters, on dialogue, on suspense, all those things. There, you might find something missing when you take a look at that online workshop, which dissects a story, and you might find, oh, I'm really weak in this one section. And what's good about it is you can go back and and take you can do the lectures over and over and over again, once you finish it, you're not closed off from it. It's just, it's there for you. All right. Um, Jennifer Fleck wants to know if you could come up with a wish list of types of stories you'd like to see coming through the contest portal more often, what would it look like? Such as you'd love to see more hard SF, solar punk, et cetera. I would love to see what you've got. Good. Yeah, I know that leaves <laughs> wide open. But remember, I need 12 different stories. Actually, I need 32 excellent stories to send out to the other judges. I need to be able to say to them, I think that these are the best of the best and I want them to be different. So I'm willing to look at just about anything if you can write it well. You know, Good. take a chance. Good. So now PA is not letting up on this thing here, PA Sicard. so. So he's got it and we're not going to give him any numbers. He said, okay, how many submissions does Ms. English pass over to you in percentage, all in caps? I think you'll be able to answer this one. And how many submissions do you read from beginning to end in percentage of the stories Ms. Pass, um, Carrie passed on to you? I know that you want to ask me to answer that question and I'm really not going to answer it because it, it's not the same from quarter to quarter. And every quarter is different depending on how many stories I read from beginning to end. I just told you the reasons why I might not read something from beginning to end. There are stories that are so compelling that I have to, despite the fact that it might be very long. Uh, or we, we now accept, by the way, flash fiction. So you, if you are good at, at encapsulating a, a great story in, in just a few hundred words, send it to us. I'd love to see something like that. People have done gimmick stories. There's one fellow who wrote it entirely in five word sentences of five letters each. And I talked to him about that. <laughs> and and yet it was good enough to uh, to win, apparently. So play with the language, play with words, make me keep reading. There are some that are so good that I can't believe it and I keep reading. There are some where I say, this feels almost good. Let me see if I can find that spark that I am so seeking. And before I know it, I've read 35 pages of a 50 page story and I still don't find it. So no, I'm not going to give you percentages. I'm good. not going to work that hard on this. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, thank you. So this is from Michelle. I've heard that there are a lot of different kinds of science fiction. Do you only accept space stories as science, fi science fiction? Oh, no, no, no. I, I mentioned that, but we've had time travel stories. We've had uh, biology stories, uh, alien uh, first contact 
first contacts are really interesting. They can be really interesting because they teach you a lot about perception of humankind. You have to come in from the alien's point of view at some point and say, what is it about human beings that keeps them from shooting us on sight? Or maybe they are trying to shoot us on sight. I don't know. There are so many kinds of science fiction. Go for it. I've, I've read things that I would not normally have picked up and, and loved some of them. I have read things that were of very, very familiar tropes. And yet there was still that freshness that said to me, keep going with this one. Good. Now, one thing that we spoke about um, a short while ago, and that's on this, this new facet called AI. And um, so we've changed that. It'll be published in the next volume. It'll it'll be going up on the website pretty soon as well. But just if you can just address the point of, of AI, is it accepted with the writers of future competition? It is not. If we can figure out that you use chat GPT or any of the other AIs to write your story, it's rejected. It's disqualified. And that story will not be readmitted. I, I'm, I'm just want it to come out of your brain. If you need spell check, use spell check. If you need a little help with your grammar, go for that. But if it's all right, if it's writing your plot for you, it will feel funny. Uh, college professors have a huge problem now with people using one of the AI systems to write their essays for them. And it's usually beyond the grammar level of the students, but it also has no humanity to it. And if you think that some stories that are written by actual human beings lack a spark, you can imagine what a an AI written story is going to be in terms of flatness. And also it's, it's going to use words in a funny way. We will figure it out. Yes, I know some people are out there thinking challenge accepted, go for it. But believe me, I would rather have a so-so story from an actual human being than the finest piece of literature that can be turned out by a robot because that's not who the story that's not who this contest is for. Right. Yeah, I think it's really important on this that people understand that it started originally just with the art because the AI generated art is is already pretty well advanced but um Someone showed me a story that was AI generated, um, and I went, "Wow, okay." So that's when we just said we're going to do a um, a uh, address it right now, so that it doesn't get off the ground at all. Just make sure people know that's that's not what it's about. It will it'll definitely show up when they come to the uh, workshop, and you see people trying to uh, you know they're they're AI generated storytellers, and they go to the workshop. It's going to be a real uh, embarrassment for them and the same thing with the artists you see people they don't know how to sketch you know they only knew how to do is put in the the key words into whatever program they're using so this is this is a contest that was created to um help the aspiring writer and artist it's created by mr hubbard in 83 and we're we're in our 40th year right now it's been very successful a lot of great winners have gone on to amazing careers but that's what we're all about and that's why we're so, we were so happy that jody agreed to be the, the coordinating judge following up uh dave I love her storytelling. She's, you know, um, she's also worked with so many of the other, um, like Anne McCaffrey, um, work, having worked with her, just, I know what type of storytelling she does. And it's it's been very, um, very important to, to maintain that integrity of the contest. So we're going to continue with that. So, okay, so Jody just, she'll have to join back in again, whatever she is zoomed out so um so let's see here we did set up um a new we used to have just reject now there's like um joni there's how many different emails uh come out for somebody or different buckets they have when when they when they don't get accepted can you comment on that joni's gone too yeah Oh, you know, we put in a thing um, last year. So to answer this question of like, what happened? You know, why did I why did I get um, rejected? 
to give a little bit more direction. We have a lot of entries that come into the contest, so we can't address each person. But what I've seen overall is when people go from honorable mention, honorable mention, they keep on and they're sincere about it. What do I need to do to fix it? And we offer I have the podcast that I do. I just uploaded episode number 207. You can I've covered almost every episode, every thing I can think of, and I'm still doing that. We've got the online workshop. We've got the forum, which anybody's welcome to uh, participate in. It's won um, two Critter Awards so far, and it's up for another one this year. Um, so we're trying to do everything we can to assist that aspiring writer to, uh, you know, to make that that grade to get in there. Um, but it's it's your creative, it's your spark that's going to really really sell it, and just. Um, like what Jody was saying, all these things are so important to to make it work on having a um, a, a success as as a storyteller. And definitely in the forum, there's a lot of people that are totally willing to work with you. That's one thing we definitely have. Um, and if you're not part of it, definitely join it because we got past winners that are in there that want to work with you if you need help on stuff. And again, the uh, um, the online workshop provides a lot of tip. Number of honorable mentions increased markedly after we released that course a couple of years ago. Somebody just asked if there's going to be more uh, online courses. Yes, we're adding three this year. Yeah, we're adding three uh, new lessons onto the online workshop. We did interviews with um, Nedia Corfor, um, Kevin Anderson, and Robert. Robert Sawyer. Robert Sawyer. So those are going to be going up this year as additional. Um, Lessons for the online workshop. Rob Sawyer, Jody's back in. Okay, good. So yeah, and we're working on more. I'm, we're setting up to do more interviews this year as well, so we can keep on expanding. Okay, so we got Jody back here again. Yeah, I have no idea what happened. <laughs> the Twilight Zone. We had a, we had uh, thunderstorms here this this uh, this afternoon, and we lost power a few times. I wonder if that was a brownout. Possibly then, yes. Um, so then we've got, let's see. What do you think of the short story? This is from um, Aiden L. What do you think of the short story to novel pipeline? Is it feasible to transform a winning or not short story into a novel? I, I think it's been done. I know that it has been done. Uh, Robert Silverberg wrote uh, a, an entire novel from Isaac Asimov's The Ugly Little Boy, and it was uh, it was beautiful. People have expanded ideas from their own short stories into novels and even series so it's it's a thing that can happen there's this one guy named scott card that wrote this had this one short story no, remember well, this one it is? Yes. no i don't actually ender or something or another did was did ender's game start as, as a, a short uh, story okay <laughs> so they are two different disciplines writing a short story is not the same as writing a novel but you can learn a lot about both uh, by writing the other one. You can you can learn to understand that the single arc in a short story could easily be expanded. And you'll also figure out pretty quickly if you are writing chapter one or, or if you're writing a short story. Some people don't even realize it until they've gotten to the end and, re and know they have not finished the story. They've just written the introduction to it. Yeah. Pat Rothfuss's The Road to Levenshire, which won, I was a winner in Rise to Future 24, something like that. That was obviously, that was, I think, chapter three or so in his, uh, the first book mm -hmm. of the Pink Hill Trilogy. All right. Um, this is from Darren Lippman regarding proing out. Is it your third professional sale or your fourth that disqualifies you? I think it's three. After three pro sales, then you're disqualified. Um, and then here's go from... Um, so this is from again from Robbie in Tokyo. How do you feel about humor and submissions? So this is your this is your specialty, I believe. This Scott is my specialty, and yes. we have a couple of brilliantly funny stories that made it to uh, as finalists. That uh, actually as winners, they're going to be in this volume. So sure, if you can be funny, if you can write a humorous story that the humor has uh, doesn't feel forced flows naturally and doesn't make me say oh god you really reached for that one send me i would love to read it i would love to laugh there is a, a terrific story that everybody loved i think it was in the first quarter 
And I was so excited that everyone else felt the same way about it that I did. So good. This is great. I mean, I love, I mean, I love all the stories that you all end up, end up picking. And just just to reiterate, none of the staff at, at Rise of Future have any say in what wins in the in the contest. It's strictly up to judges. It's our our work, which Johnny does, is takes the names off and puts in assigns a number to it, and that's what goes to the judges. It's only when they send it back to us, okay, number this and number that and number the other thing are the are the winners that we know what it is. We just we don't get into that. It's never have, never will. That's just that's not our thing. So we keep it really separate, which um, makes it really exciting for me. I'm about ready to get volume 39. I uh, think tomorrow the next day to, to start proofreading. So I'm really anxious to read all these stories. All right. Um, let's see. So here's one from Christopher Hankel. Following on from your comment on the second person story, how excited are you about other less common narratives? Negative, um, arc, cinematic, point of view, omniscient, assuming these are delivered well. If you can do it well, if I if if you can get me to ride along with you, I, I will enjoy it. If it's clunky or if you are trying to make me do too much of the work, then nope. But if you can do it well, I'd love to see it. Awesome. I want you to give me your best. I want you to give me something that you would be proud to show anybody that you would send to Asimov or you would send back in the days when Omni was taking stories and paying $3,000 a story. It was just incredible what they were paying. But give me the thing that is the story that you can't stop writing, the thing that you're so excited about that you want to tell that story to everyone. Good. All right, so Joe, it's either Joe Bennett or Joe Benet. How will Wolf handle episodes published on Kindle's Bella platform? Will each episode count as a short story if it gets 5,000 readers and thus contribute to proing out? It's got to be, it's not just 5,000 readers. It also has to be eight cents a word. It's both those things has to be in play for it to count as a pro sale. You need that eight cents a word. But any comment on, on Vela, on Kindle Vela? I think that Bella is going to be handled in the same way as, as Kindle uh, Kindle Singles because it's also on Kindle. I believe that Joni was going to look into uh, Joni. You were going to talk to the the nice young man who uh, talked to us about Kindle. But um, I I would say based on what I know about it that yeah it, it's going to be the same way. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So. So here's a question from PA, I'm not sure. Why are the S-I-D-H-E, Sid, Sida? She, it's pronounced she. She, why are the she so angry at the fairies? What is the unfinished business alluded to at the end of the mythology series? So this is over now we're talking about, I guess this is your work here. I wondered that for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> I think they think that the 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 folk, they don't refer to themselves as the little folk. We're the big folk. They uh, they feel that the the folk are getting too close to the big folk, and they're uh, stealing secrets that should only belong to the fair ones. That's that's part that's part of uh, part of what they're doing. And and I've always meant to go back and, and put a couple more volumes on that. After all, I haven't got Keith married off yet. <laughs> but thank you for asking. Okay, um, and then, uh, oh yeah, PA also says, Luke Wildman won Wolf with a hilarious story not too long ago in volume 37. Cool. All right, so this is from Robbie in Tokyo again. So what are your writing habits? Mornings, late nights? How do you go about your writing? I'm a morning writer. That's when I get the most done. If I'm writing a book and I'm getting close to the end, I will write all day and all night until the sleep toxins have built up so much that I have to sleep for a few hours. But my normal procedure is to get up, feed the cats, make my cocoa and sit down to work. If I, I never look at my email before noon, because if I do, that's all I'm going to do today. So the correspondence gets handled. 
Oops. All right. So I'm going to do the soft shoe again here. Um, let me see if there's any of the questions that I can address. Um, you've written, oh, who's that to? One thing here on, on PA that you're asking again on this red line of death, um, there's a lot of things that we get requested uh, to provide, but it's just, it gets too unwieldy. Um, what we've tried to do here is um, the contest is, is grown, you know, so we narrow it down. We do have a lot more honorable mentions. One thing I will say is every, about every other week, I see some author who puts in their press release as they announce their volume that they won honorable mention in Writers of the Future. If you've got that as something that you can you can tout, absolutely do that. It it is um, it helps editors to to take your your story out of the slush pile. If you can say, look at I want honorable mention, put that in your cover story. I mean your cover letter. Um, but it gets it gets to a point where for Jody to actually spend do due diligence to these stories and read them to get into these other administrative things. There's a lot of there's a lot that goes into it. We're constantly working how to streamline and make it possible to handle the increased number of stories that come in on this computerization. We've worked with the company quite a bit, like, okay, well, how can you do this and do this and do that um, to be able to expedite Carrie and Jody being able to actually uh, get to, and just spend time reading the story and then quickly put it into the appropriate bucket, you know, if it didn't make it or if it did make it. So, um, that's what we're trying to accomplish on that. And what we say in terms of like review it, we do have the form. We have these other tools that we put in place to be able to assist you to improve the quality of your story. You know, um, that's, all, that's all I can say. And that's something that we just, we're really keen on, on making people get better, but it's also, uh, these are the, these are the vehicles we, we've put there to be able to assist you. Are you back now, Jody? I am back. I'm giving up on my my desktop. It is elderly, and evidently, it's not handling the power of um, a fluctuation very well. Okay. Well, glad to have you back here. So, uh, <laughs> so questions, answers. Yeah. So somebody was just asking. I'm just just a recap. Um, had another repeat of the question asking about you know the red line of death. Whoever's on here, we need to get them back. Uh, somebody needs to turn off their mic. Yeah, we're, Emily's going finding that culprit. Um, yeah, so just while we don't use the red line of death, and I'm just saying, you already it's, it's already so much involved on reading the stories and anything that gets into additional administration on your part is going to take away from being able to read as many stories you need to read to get through a quarter. I would really love to be able to read them all the way through. And some of them interest me enough that I, I want to know more about what they're doing. But if I realize that I'm reading a story that is going to be an honorable mention, I I must stop. I have to I have to give it I have to give it up, and that unfortunately tells you something that it's not going to be a finalist if I know that uh, I I'm not, I'm going on with it only out of curiosity. So I I, I wish that I could, but right. it's just not possible. Right. Okay, good. And it's one thing here that um, you've written a lot of short stories. Have you ever considered gathering them into volumes? Yeah, I already have begun to do that. I, I've got a collection of, of my cat stories called Cats Triumphant. Uh, a Circle of Celebration are my holiday stories. And I've got at least one other. But yes, I, I have been I have been bundling my stories together. I started doing it for um, Story Bundle and Humble Bundle. So once once they were already together and they had a cover, why not just go ahead and sell them? Sure, sure. And Kelly Varner asks, do you aim for word count or hours writing on an average day, quote unquote, average day? I write until I'm writing gibberish and then I hang it up. I do not look, I do not go for a specific word count. I know people who do. And for them, that's that's a goal that that helps them achieve what they're trying to do. For me, if I'm only concentrating on word count, it's it gets mechanical. And that's that's not fair to me. That's not fair to my work. So right. Okay. Um 
And this is from, again, from Joe Benet. How does Woof handle Kindle singles? Uh, they're short stories. Kindle singles are, are short stories. So they're usually like 99 cents. Some people charge a dollar 99 or 2.99, but I think that's pushing it. And I would say that if you have earned professional rates by selling that many Kindle singles, good for you. Yeah. Good. Uh, you've written many, many, many stories. How many are from you and how many were actually written by uh, Minx? Oh, well, Minx has written several of them that they, I really need to get back to that because I was having so much fun with it. When we got the the current three cats and, and they are only Athena is here right now. So let's see if I can. <laughs> 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 they, uh, they were behaving in such a weird fashion that I decided that they must be an international, or excuse me, interplanetary spy and two hapless kittens who got caught up in, in her wake when she got transferred to another uh, planet. And this all came because my husband actually drove to Texas and brought these three cats back with him on a 26 hour drive. So uh, it was quite an adventure. And they, they showed their personalities right away. So Minx has written a few things. She likes to take credit for all of it, but I, I humbly disagree. Okay, good. And um, this is one more question here. Um, could you define what Wolf Market is to you? Is your taste different than David Farland? A what market? Wolf Market, Rise of the Future Market. Okay, I haven't heard it pronounced like that before. <laughs> I am going to be different than Dave Harland because we're different people. I have different taste, but I think that both of us knew quality. We have different ideas about what, maybe we had different ideas about what the best genre was, but I think that we have, we both chose just like the other two coordinated judges before us, stories that come from a variety of genres, things that we may not have picked up ourselves but we're so good that we couldn't resist them good and um now we've got we're getting pretty close to the end of today's um zoom so i got one last um this is from gentina gray if a short story is up on a personal blog already is that story disqualified from woof i don't know john no, it's not. It's it's, it's only um, if it's on your blog. If it's not been submitted, if it's not been published, you know you're, and it's not pro sale. You can you can submit it. It's not. You're not disqualified there. And then just one last question from them. Then you had some things you wanted to be able to direct to everybody as well. You said make sure you want you wanted to cover a few points. So where can people find your anthologies? Uh, well, Wordfire published. A Circle of Celebrations, um, Prince of Cats Press has uh, Cats Triumphant, which has a picture of marmalade on it. And let me see. Bane. I edited have... a couple of anthologies. Bane has one, uh, Wordfire has another. So check out their websites and uh, what their publications. But everywhere and... on Amazon though too, right? Yeah, they would, they would go through to Amazon. Yeah. Good. Now you had mentioned that you wanted to say mention a, some a couple of things you said when we first started this. I want to make sure that uh, do you remember what that was? Because I certainly don't right now. I I think no, I don't remember either. But I I want I want everybody to send me short stories. I want me you to give me your best. I want you to surprise me. I want to see what you think is cool. And I want you to intrigue me and drag me through your story all the way to the end, just despite me saying, I've got other things I've got to look at. So please, you know, surprise and delight me. You can submit once a quarter. You probably already know that. The, uh, oh, the word count has been reduced from 17,000 no, words. No, that, that one's still there. That one, didn't, that, that one didn't change yet. Oh, okay. That did not change. Yeah. But the yes. thing on the AI and you, the the language on on um, we made it very clear that we can't have the 
extreme profanity and that stuff there that's that's in the sex the the um that that's very much uh, made very clear right now and um sometimes it might be a good story but it's just not appropriate for this market so it's not um it's not just i think we changed the language in that too so you don't feel like it was a bad story it's just it's not appropriate for this market so it's just it's disqualified it's not um it's not said it's a bad story it's just not our market if it's really really good even though it doesn't suit us it might uh, ascend to a semi-finalist but it will not see publication with writers of the future it can't right right we're very sincere about our model that we do and the people that we address but in terms of a new year's resolution any uh final words of um what you would recommend for somebody besides obviously you can't win if you never submit <laughs> that's true but you can also you also can't submit if you never write it so even if you write a page a day even if you set a timer and make yourself sit down for 15 minutes a day with a kitchen timer next to you get words down get the idea out of your mind and onto paper or onto a computer file talk it out uh, kevin anderson and martin shoemaker, shoemaker have put together a book yeah uh on how to how to talk into a recorder and make it work for you david weber who is a great of our field has done his books verbally for years because he has bursitis so it, this is the way that he can be productive and oh my gosh he's productive he writes really really thick books and he does it all verbally so i think that's pretty cool any way you can get words out of your head and into a format that somebody else can read do it give yourself a goal once a quarter send us a story you know we we want to see you there in hollywood we want to see you there at the seminar Tim Powers and I uh, have a great deal of fun doing our class together, and I'm looking forward to the next one, which is in April. That's right, April 28th. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I I don't know. If, if anyone has any final notes, put it in the chat. Uh, MLA rules, I I don't know. Are, are we uh, Chicago Manual of Style, MLA? Yeah, we do. Um... Pretty much, it's it's uh, Chicago that we that we follow in this, okay. um, and a lot of the times it comes up because we also have um, if it was written and submitted from Australia or from UK, we don't change from Australian English or UK English. We we keep it in the English that it's been submitted in. So we'll publish sometimes the three three different versions of English. We'll publish um, in a year just because of that's what where that story hailed from so we used to change it a couple of years ago we switched like wherever it's from that's the english that we maintain and we proofread against that we are publishing your story not our version of your story exactly exactly so give give us something give us something that we can't resist great well thank you very much jody and thank you all for attending i hope you enjoyed this this will be uh saved and will be uploaded probably tomorrow on uh, youtube so for anybody that missed this, or if you wanted to sit, share it with someone else, then um, we'll have it there for you to do so. Again, thank okay. you very much, Jody. Thank you and so much. You, yes, and everybody, we're back tomorrow at one o'clock um, Pacific time for people from Europe and other places where they're not able to attend right now. But you're welcome to come back and sign up again for that as well if you want to. But anyway, thank you very much, Jody, and good night. Thank you. Merci. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Everybody can say goodbye if you want to. Thank you, Domani. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Good luck with Mega Million.